Did you know that this plant found in a lot of backyards has at least five times the amount of vitamin C that you will find in oranges? So if you live in a area where you can't grow citrus trees, hello, cold Pacific Northern climate, or you just don't have the space for them, you can still grow roses and harvest rose hips and have an incredible source of vitamin C as well as other really cool medicinal properties for yourself and your family. So not only are these really high in vitamin C, which makes them a powerhouse when it comes to cold and flu season, we all know that vitamin C is one of those vitamins that helps our immune system and helps our body function, but it also has some other pretty powerful, cool, properties to it, which means this is gonna be one that you are gonna to want to grow in your backyard. So first we need to get these harvested. And one of the things that you wanna look for is the rose hips that are nice and bright. They're still very solid. They're not showing any squishiness or signs of rot. So these guys up here, so you can see they're very discolored. There's black and they're, they're really soft, right? These are really mushy and they're starting to rot. So obviously we don't wanna harvest those. What we're after is these ones that are bright in color. They're still very firm to the touch. And these are the guys that we want to bring inside. Now this one has a little bit on this side, but this side is still good. So I will cut into this one and we'll see if there's any parts that's salvageable on that. And if you wanna learn about the best varieties of rose hips to grow, you can check out the blog post. We'll put a, the link to that on beneath this video on melissaknorris.com. And you can look at growing different medicinal varieties for the rose hips there. So ideally, if you're after a sweet flavor on your rose hips, if they go through a frost, these guys are actually pretty hardy then they're just like grapes and they will become sweeter. However, mine, I have a lot of these that are starting to turn bad, so I am not waiting for the first frost in order to harvest these bad boys. So these are a different variety that I've got of roses. And as you can see, these ones are barely have any rose hips that are ready to be harvested. So this variety here, they're really green. So they're gonna start out small and then they'll get larger and then they'll start to turn from this green color and they'll transition into kind of like an orange and then they'll get to be this dark bright red. What's great about this is these varieties all be able to harvest and probably let them go through that frost to get the maximum sweetness and I'll have a whole nother flush of crop. But there are a few of these where they bloomed early. So I'm gonna add those to this harvest that we have right now. That is a duck casualty. Ducks like rose hips as well, apparently. So now we're gonna take these in the house and I'm gonna show you how to preserve them because once you find out all the medicinal properties that these bad boys have, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have them preserved on your shelf to use all winter long too. So as I mentioned earlier, rose hips are phenomenal and known for their high vitamin C and used a lot of times when you have cough and colds, especially upper respiratory systems, not just because of their vitamin C properties, which is high, but also because they can help with cold symptoms, again, especially upper respiratory and can really help and aid that. But beyond that, they have some pretty amazing properties and that is when it comes to osteoarthritis inflammation and joint pain relief. So not only do you have the benefits of cold and flu season, but if you deal with any of those or end up with an injury, and I know for a lot of people who do have some type of arthritis or different joint issues, a lot of times as you move into those colder months, especially if you live in an area where it is damp and chilly, 
as in Pacific Northwest, that it seems like the symptoms tend to really flare up and you have a lot more issues during those cold, damp winter months. So having your rose hips on hand to use during those winter months not only helps when that's when cold and flu season is in higher and kicking where you've got more of those viruses going around, but it's also great to have on hand to use in teas and or syrups where you'll be consuming that daily to help manage some of those other symptoms. So with rose hips, of course, with any herbal medicine or plant that you're using, you wanna make sure that you're doing adequate research if you are on specific medications to make sure it doesn't interact with that or if you have special health conditions and that type of thing. But these are a great one to have in your arsenal and to look into. So we need to get these preserved now, if you're getting them a little bit late in the season, so these varieties I was a little bit late in picking, and if they're not really firm to the touch and blemish free, so if you see some type of like a little hole, like on here, see, you can kind of see like some little pinholes on here and we've got some discoloration on this side, whereas this side looks all great. But if you have rose hips where you've got a little bit on one side, then that is when I recommend cutting these open. Now there's two reasons for cutting open your rose hips before you use them and preserve them. So here I cut this one open and you can see where I've got a little bit of rot and discoloration here. You don't ever wanna preserve anything if it's already starting to deteriorate. You really only want to preserve things when they are in their prime. The other thing though is sometimes when you see those little holes, it's actually because worms have worked their way in <laughs> to the rose hips. So this, you can see, I know it's gross. There's, there's a, quite a few worms on this. These are seeds, those are actual worms. And so this is one I am not comfortable with consuming. So it is going into the compost pile, but you can see where there's some of those holes on there where the skin has been cracked and compromised. And that's how those worms, they got in. This one was past its prime. So if you know that your rose hips are in their prime, there's no little marks, there's no discoloration or that type of thing, you can dehydrate these whole and use them that way. But some people inside on the seeds and inside the rose hips, there can be like these little, little hairs and little fibers. You can kind of see them on here especially in there. And those can really irritate some people's throats and, and bother them. So knowing that, I prefer to open mine up just so I can check because I knew that these were, I'd waited a little bit long to get these. I will not wait for the other flush that comes on. And so I like to just take the spoon and just scrape out all of the seeds and all of those little fibers that could irritate. And then I'm gonna check and see, I'm not going to, wanna preserve anything that has damage on it or is starting to go bad. So we are going to actually cut that out, cut off our stem, and then this I'm just gonna put onto my tray here. Now you can dehydrate these, or if you have a freeze dryer, you can definitely freeze dry your rose hips. So we're gonna go ahead and go through these, cutting out any of the bad parts. And when you are dehydrating and or freeze drying, Ideally, you wanna cut them into relatively the same size and thickness, just so that they dehydrate and or freeze dry at the same time, so that everything, the more consistent it is in size, then it's going to be finished at about the same time. So we're gonna load those up, and then we're going to dehydrate those until they are fully dry and or freeze dry them. And then we are just going to put them into, I like to put all of my herbs into mason jars. That's predominantly how I store mine. So some type of container that keeps the air out. I like these because it has that rubber gasket. And this is all I have left from last year's rose hips. So as you can see, there's not a lot left there. And you have a couple of options. If you wanna leave, dehydrate these and leave them in their more whole form like this, you can. Or if you know that you're gonna be using these in a syrup or a tea, then you're gonna to want to cut them up after they've been dehydrated into the smaller pieces like this because you have more surface area that's being exposed and therefore you can take out all of those good medicinal properties. However, you don't wanna expose all of those surface areas for a long period of time it's better to store them in a more whole form if you wanna preserve the highest medicinal properties. So I am going to uh, go ahead and use this batch up, 
but the rest of these, once they're fully dehydrated, I'm just gonna leave them in this form and then I will chop them up and pulse them. You can use a food processor, you can use like a coffee grinder, um, anything like that to pulse them up and I'll do that when I am closer to actually using them. Now, if you wanna see more ways to use the rose hips medicinally, now that you know all of the goodness in there, I like to put them into my elderberry syrup. So you can watch this video and get that recipe for making homemade elderberry syrup.